y'all, it's Tammy with Collard Valley Cooks and Real Southern Woman. I'm so used to saying Collard Valley Cooks, it's hard for me not to say it. Um, tonight, we are doing our Bible study. I was hoping to come to y'all on Saturday, and then May did have a wreck, um, and I posted the pictures, and she is doing, I mean, she didn't get hurt, but of course she got her feelings hurt. So, Chris has been out getting her a rental car today and um, getting all that stuff taken care of. But I wanted to uh, come on here and say hello to everybody. And um, I looked at the twenty the Bible study from last night. I actually like, I really like it. So I'm probably going to review it. It's January the 27th. And it's out of our Jesus, Our Perfect Hope book. And um, it is talking about the Holy Spirit, which is one of my favorite subjects, since he is our guider. And um, so it's called Always Be Listening. And I, I decided that I would uh, do that one. And it comes out of John chapter 16, verse 13. And so um, I'm going to go in here. If you mark Luke and John, and John 16, it seems to be where he's kind of stuck at the last few uh, lessons we've been in is in the uh, book of John. So this one is uh, 16 verse 13 and this is the spirit of truth. So I'm going to read the passage to you starting with that sec not just that one verse but just starting a little bit above that verse and so we are in John chapter 16 um, at the beginning of the chapter it's called words of wisdom no I'm sorry words of warning and then uh, on verse 5, this is where it starts, the spirit of truth. So I'll read this whole section out of my study Bible to you. And it says, But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asks me, Whether goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. If I go not away, the Comforter will not come into you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. O oh, sin, uh, of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. It says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you in, into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father." So when Jesus tells the disciples he's leaving, he gives them plenty of hope and uh, encouragement by telling them he's sending them a comforter. That comforter is the Holy Spirit. And we know, us that are saved, that when we are saved, uh, Jesus does give us the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of our heart, which helps us know right from wrong and um, shows us what is good and what is bad. Um, and he guides us. So I am going to read this Bible study today from Charles Stanley. And this is uh, called Always Be Listening. It says, The Spirit of the living God is always calling to you and always drawing you into the Father's presence. God works within your needs when you feel lonely or helpless. He is revealing the necessity for you to enter into an intimate communion with your Savior. When he brings a verse or an issue to mind, he's asking you to deal with something that is hindering you. He is asking you to deal with something. Oh, I read it again. He is asking you to deal with something that is hindering you. 
Even in your temptations, he is showing you that you require liberation from bondage in a certain area and that he has provided a way out through faith in his wisdom and obedience to his word. The trouble is that learning to listen to him is both a learning process and a discipline. He teaches you how to hear him and then gives you opportunities to put what you've learned into practice. So listen. With a wise ear on how God is calling you, assume that everything is an opportunity to connect with him. Because it is. And trust that when you listen and respond to him, you've made the choice to experience life at its very best. He says, this is Charles Stanley, he says, Ho Holy Spirit, help me to realize when you are speaking and how to respond in obedience to you. Amen. Now, um, I will say this, the Holy Spirit is a spirit, an actual, real, divine spirit. Um, and we do have them all the time. You don't have to, like, be, you know, like, call him to you or revive him or anything. I mean, he lives in you all the time. Now, you can quench the spirit, which means um, you could uh, live away from God or uh, not ever be in your spiritual mind or read the Bible or have anything to do with God. Uh, you can still be saved, but you quench the spirit because you don't uh, you don't uh, live in your spiritual realm at all. Uh, because we have a fleshly body and we have a spiritual body. Um, and the only way we talk, let me say this too. The way that God speaks to you is through the word of God. Um, so you don't get some revelation. Some spirit doesn't just appear to you out in the middle of nowhere. I don't believe, believe in all that. And, you know, some divine thing comes into your room and tells you to do something. That's not how it works. Uh, God speaks to you through the Word of God, okay? And the Holy Spirit think, uh, speaks to you through your spirit. Um, like, like, I'll give you an example. Like last night, when I lay down, I don't know why. And it's so funny because this is talking about this, and it was last night. Um, but it says, um, he's asking you to deal, it says, when he brings a verse or an issue to mind, he is asking you to deal with something that is hindering you, okay? So it's funny because last night when I went to bed, um, I was laying there and I couldn't sleep. And I just started thinking, you know, I wonder how many verses I could try to think of in my head that I could remember. And so I started, you know, reciting them in my head, all the different ones I could think of. And then I'd wait a minute and I'd think of another one. And then I'd wait a minute and I'd think of another one. And so it makes me wonder, maybe the Holy Spirit was trying to uh, help me get through something last night. I don't know. But the way the Holy Spirit's always spoke to me, most of the time, it's because I've done something wrong, said something wrong, or the wrong way. And really quickly, he normally says, look what you've done. Apologize. Or you shouldn't have said that. Or you shouldn't have done that. Or, you know, he convicts us of our sin. And so uh, we should be aware that he is real and he is there all the time. And you can talk to him um, just like you talk to God or Jesus. You can also talk to the Holy Spirit. So remember that because it's the spirit that lives inside of us. It's the spirit that is around us all the time that we have more of a connection to. And I think so many Christians miss out because we do not talk to the Spirit. We do not give him the credit. Now, he doesn't want the credit. He wants you to give Jesus the credit. But we don't acknowledge that he's there so that he can help us more than he does. Um, so keep that in mind. If you want to study a little bit about the Holy Spirit, then um, that would be kind of a cool thing to study. Um, I, might, I might can look into that and bring it to you all later. But, um, I think it's a good subject. I hope y'all are having a blessed night. We had a really good supper. I'm nice and full and relaxed. I'm ready to go. Sit down on my couch and watch TV for the day. We've been to Mama's today. We've done quite a bit today. So um, I hope y'all had a blessed and productive day. I hope if we do get snow, all of you stay in the house that are in the south. And you don't venture out and get in trouble on the road. Um... So let's just say that. Y'all stay put, stay warm, make something to keep.
keep you warm, like chili or soup or something good. And um, we will see y'all tomorrow. I've got to make something sweet tomorrow because I really want something good. Um, I hope y'all have a good night. Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much. We thank you for this earth that you have given us. Even if the devil is uh, over the world, we still are thankful that you've get it, given it to us. We're thankful to live in a place where we can worship you freely. We're thankful um, that you made it such a beautiful place for us to live and see all the things that you've created. Um, and we also hope and pray that we do let your spirit talk and guide us so that each day that we are here, it can be an even better day for us. Uh, because living through the spirit and through your spirit does make life a lot sweeter. Um, may we always recognize that the spirit is near and that you have given it to us as a comfort. May we go back to these scriptures and read them and be comforted by the fact that you didn't just leave us and go back to the Father without leaving the Spirit with us to help us each and every second of every day. Um, we just love you and praise you for all that you have done um, for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a good night. I love you. I hope to see you tomorrow. Lord willing, right?